Hiya, welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. Uh, we do everything Palo Alto and, and expanding into more security in the very near future. Um, so other, other vendors and, and possibly going back down the route of the whole offensive security so we can start doing some demonstrations on on Palo Alto firewalls and other firewalls and how they handle security stuff. Now you can start building real world um, configurations. Please like and subscribe. Always feel weird saying it, um, but it really does help. It helps the channel and it helps um, it helps keep the channel going. So that out of the way, this is going to be hopefully a very short video. It doesn't really need to be a long video. It's just an accompaniment to the variables video before, and it's born out of the fact that during a uh, an engagement uh, recently, um, the, the the customer wanted multiple firewalls to be managed from a single single stack so to demonstrate that here we have the demo multi-firewall stack and then that's using the generic uh, minus cdl template and the uh, demo template which are which are here up here so it's a demo template and then uh, generic minus cdl just really wanted to make a video to say there's a couple of things to be aware of. These, it's a very, very good idea. It makes everything really clean. The consistency then across your network is kind of forced as well because of the things that you can't variableize. Um, but it does have a few, it has some very major advantages and it has some disadvantages. But there aren't any disadvantages, the design considerations is more what I'd call them. So the first thing is, to understand that once we've got multiple firewalls in that stack, there's a couple of ways that we can control those variables. So we can view them. So this is the device key table. So we can see that we've got, the variable obviously stays the same. The, the key name stays the, the same because that's how it's referenced and that's where it's referenced within the template. And then we've got the devices there as well. So for our Paris device, this is gonna be the configuration and for our uh, Amsterdam device that's going to be the configuration and there are a couple of ways to manage this so you can manage the variables in here we could add a variable into the stack and then use it for firewalls within that stack uh, exactly the same as we can come to the demo template and we can see that the variables are housed in there you could have the same in there and they would all merge together in there if we wanted to pull those variables we can export them. Once it's exported, we can open it up uh, and then we can adjust the values in there. Uh, it has to be a CSV file though. So if you, if you export it and you export it as a CSV and then edit it in Excel, what Excel tends to like to put, and I always get this wrong, it tends to put it in XSLX uh, format that won't work when it comes back into Panorama. So when we come back here with our newly um, edited file, file and we go to import it, it will fail because it's not a CSV. Um, I use Google Sheets. Um, no, I don't. Yes, I do. I use Google Sheets. Um, I use Google Sheets and that allows me to then save that as, um, as a, a CSV file, which I can then upload. Okay, just to give you an idea of what that looks like once it's in um, the sheet, is this is basically what it is. So on the, on the top we have our titles, we have the variable name, the variable type, and then we have, for some reason this has come through as unknown. Um, it would normally come through with the host name of the firewall, and then the next, the next value there is a serial number. So if you know what the host name of a firewall is going to be that's going to be added to a stack and the serial number, you can simply create a column here with exactly the same um configurations so but obviously tailored to your new firewall uh conf configure that here and then put these variables in and then they will you can upload that to um to the panorama and then it will reflect on your on your firewall so it's actually it's, it's a really good way of working with uh with variables it's very good if you want to import a lot of different configurations at once so if you're pre-staging firewalls or something like that and you know what the um you know what the, the uh, values are going to be. You can pre-stage it that way and then when, when you put your firewall in or you start managing your firewall, you can push that firewall into that stack and then that will be pushed out to it. However, for day-to-day -day work, for day-to-day -day, um, configuration and sometimes configuration changes, um, 
that's a little bit clumsy and a little bit stressful. So you can also, from the summary, so in panorama uh, summary, we've also got this variables column here. And the variables column here allows you to click into it. And then we can see the variables for that firewall and we can override them here. So where this is here, so the 1111 is inherited actually from the template. We can see that it says that here's from the demo template. If we want to change that in here, so we want to say that our Paris firewall is going to use, well, hey, why not? Good old Google DNS. Do that there, overridden on the device, close that. We can then commit that to Panorama. Okay, that's now committed to Panorama and just so that we can confirm this before we go any further forward. So our VM, uh, PAVM Paris, which is the one that we uh, edited, if I remember correctly. So if we go to that, we can see under services that our indeed our primary DNS server is 1111. That was our just our, our value from our template. And then we've altered it in Panorama to be the uh, Google DNS, the, the famous 8.8.8. .8 .8. Okay, so now we're going to push that out to the devices. So we're going to push to the device. Again, we can come in here and we can have a look. We don't need to worry about Nevada because it's not connected and I don't know why I haven't taken it off yet. That's just laziness on my part. We can see that we've got um, this firewall, the, the template is out of sync. So we can go there. Lines of context is basically lines up and down from where the change is being made in the configuration. It can you, the, the more context you have, the easier it is to guess within the XML tree where it is. However, it can also become a little bit wordy and you can get a little bit lost in in uh, what I like to call snow blindness. So we're going to go for line, lines of context 5, which is opened up on another monitor for some unknown reason. So I'll drag that across. So we can see now that our device config, DNS settings, servers, gives us a really good idea of um, of what's uh, of what's going to be changed. Okay, so now we know what's going to be changed. We can simply click out of that and then we can OK. We know we're going to push to our demo stack. We can also do the same as we can push changes made by just the single admin. So we're going to push that change out to the firewall, which is going to be a commit all action. Um, changes that are committed to Panorama come as the commit. Changes that are being pushed out to the firewalls is a is a commit all, and that's the same on the command line as well. And we should probably look at the command line at some point for um, for when committing stuff. So we know that's active, and then once that's committed, we will go to the firewall and we'll check, and that should now be um, all the eights. So, but whilst that is doing, let's have a, a quick look. So there are certain things, th and then we so, so to talk about the gotchas, so to speak, or the design considerations. So design considerations would really only be that in this, so in this instance, where every firewall is sharing this demo template, for instance, every firewall is going to get these, um, these interfaces. And when we go to add an interface, we can't add that interface specifically to that one firewall. It's, it's an interface that's added into here. So if that interface doesn't exist, say if you've got five firewalls, as we say, and three of them need an interface, and two of them, that interface doesn't exist f for that configuration. You're still going to push that interface out to those firewalls. You can then delete it from the, the firewall. Um, I believe that's valid, but you wouldn't want to do it. It depends how far you want to drift from your firewalls being managed by Panorama. So anything where there is a variable is fine you can have the variable um, and that will change um, per firewall as we've seen before um, the the variables are normally as it was as a, as a general rule so for instance we go to loop back here you will get every time so if we go to IPv4 it will say do you want to add a new variable to it uh, management profiles are just management profiles so those aren't able to be shared across. So really all we're really saying is if you are wanting to do it this way, it looks really clean. It means you've got that consistency across the firewalls. It means that you know you can then bring a firewall in and you can put it into that stack. 
you can put it into that template stack and it will pick up that configuration. It's, it's brilliant. It, it really is, and it's really clean, and it looks really good as well. Um, but you have to be aware that for um, interfaces, for instance, um, things like that, it's you're not going to be able to variableize everything. So you can't have a virtual router that exists on only one firewall out of a group of three or four. But within it, when we go in, you can only uh, you can't variableize the addition of interfaces into a um, into a virtual router either. But what you can do is you can variableize, as you can see here, you can variableize the router ID, the AS number, so you can have all different um, the, like auth profiles, anything like that that's fixed is you you it will go onto all the firewalls basically is what we're saying. Um, if you want root ID or the AS number, so it can have different BGP, obviously, because it needs different BGP. Um, when we're talking about BGP, so it needs different BGP, so they can be different across all of them, but the fact that the, uh, the BGP exists isn't a variable, so that will then get pushed out to all of them. Okay, so let's just check, so we're over 10 minutes now. So we can check and we can see that the commit all completed, so if we now go to our Paris firewall, we can see it's 1111 because it hasn't been refreshed. Thought he caught me out there. Refresh it, and then we've got 8.8.8 .8 .8 as um, as we configured. However, Amsterdam, if we go there into services, we should still see the 1111 even when it's refreshed. We still got the 1111. And as we can see, when we come back to Panorama, if we look at the template stack, both Paris and Amsterdam are in the same, they're in the same template stack. And when we look at the device key value table, and we come down here, we can see that the DNS primary for Paris is 8888, and the PAVM. Just, uh, just to sort of further, for further um, clarification, when we look at the where this has come from, if you remember when we hovered over it, it was demo template. That was where that value was from. So it always tells you where the value is from. You can see that the initial value is 1111. And as we saw in the previous variables video, and indeed sort of in this, they haven't changed the way they do variables, so it's the same on this one as well. Um, when a variable is, is created, it needs to be initialized with an initial value. Uh, so that value then will then be inherited and in fact if we go that's easy better better described by going back to here which is you know a bit clumsy because it keeps going over the screen um so where we look here specifically for uh, dns primary um we can see that we have the inherited value and the inherited value and then it was edited on this particular template here so anywhere that it's inherited when you're doing it through CSV, that's come from the template itself. It is not overridden on that device. Okay, so I hope that's helped. I hope that's sort of cleared up a little bit. Please let me know if there's any uh, questions as always. And if you made it this far, fantastic. Thank you very much for making it this far. Um, and I shall see you in the next video.